just stopped to flip a roadside board and I'm gonna zoom right in. Oh, there he goes. There's a large now monitor just slinking off this wall here. Let's see if we can get a good look at him before he disappears totally. But I think he's already gone. Oh, there he goes. Splash, big old now monitor. Cool, so after that now monitor, um, we're gonna check on this roadside board that I placed here. Oh, it's looking pretty weathered. Um, I placed this board here about three months ago and I haven't checked here since, but I think the ants have totally destroyed it. So we're not gonna get lucky finding anything under here. Yeah, it's totally, totally, totally wrecked. Um, that's a bummer, but this sort of particle board never really lasts long. But yeah, no joy on that, so I'm gonna get back into the vehicle and we're gonna go hopefully see if we can't find any of the green snakes that I thought that was a little snake, but I think it was just a frog. Any of the green snakes that have fallen into the concrete chutes. Yeah, so we are gonna head towards some of those concrete poles and hopefully see if we can't turn up any snakes in the poles and hopefully we can rescue a couple. Oh, we've got a dead green snake in the road. Let me pull over. Uh, let's have a look. It's probably a Western Natal green snake, but we'll have a quick look. Oh, it is a massive Western Natal green snake. So this is a really big Western Natal green snake. Oh, it's still, it just, it's still twitching when I picked it up there got me a little bit um, but here's just a car so I'll move off the road but you can see this is an absolute enormous Western Natal green snake what a pity still had a little bit of tail twitch left in it but yeah you can see he's obviously quite dead we will just grab a quick unnaturalist record shot of this guy just so the death isn't totally in vain and then we're going to carry on and hopefully see if we can't find some of his buddies still alive stuck in the concrete tubes so here are the concrete tubes that you guys may know from some of the previous videos there's just a couple of geckos in there i think there's a skink but there are no snakes so we're going to move over so one of the things i love about the south coast of kzn obviously it's extremely lush harsh comparison to that of the western cape but there are just a lot of animals around here. You can see this one has been filled up with grass and debris, so there won't ever be snakes in here. But we don't bypass any of these boxes, we always check them out. But yeah, KZN, it's lush, it's green, there's just a lot of animals around. So we just add a, another one of these concrete things. Let's see if there is a something in there. I've got this nice long um, hook stick that we use and obviously just the torch. Um, so yeah, we just sort of shine in these. These, to give you some context, these concrete poles, you can obviously see they're empty. Anywhere where there's something like a wall or a bush or something that typically the snakes can climb on, they, there's also a nice little small one here on the ground. It's got nothing in it. They typically will hide in quite easily. Oh, there we go. We have a nice big bush snake. It is almost completely spotless. I don't know if you guys can see in there too well, especially with the light, but I will get on my iPhone here quickly and we'll see. Zoom in right in here. Yeah, when we zoom in with the iPhone, we should be able to see much better. Let me fix this beam quickly. And there we go, we can see we've got a big bush snake and a bunch of spider webs. So let's see if we can get this little guy out. Okay, I've got the nice long stick. I'm still gonna need the torch. And typically these guys are really defensive when we get them out. So they are quite bitey, so it's always a fun time, but if 
we aren't rescuing these snakes out of these tubes they are really dying a slow painful death and it looks like this one's coming out really easily spoke too soon and because the walls of these tubes are smooth they obviously incredibly difficult for the snakes to get out but you can see he's coming right up here and as soon as he gets his head out at a bit of freedom he's gonna shoot off and there we go he's probably gonna bite me yep we have an almost spotless spotted bush snake this specimen is absolutely gorgeous you can tell it's not a green mamba it's got these bright orange eyes <laughs> gonna bite me on the face I'll just get my phone here and you guys can have a better look at him zoom out here so here we go it's our first spot of bush snake of the day we still have loads more of these containers to look in and as you can see it's got virtually no black spots on it I'll insert a picture now and here you can see quite typically what a normal bush snake looks like that is quite very well spotted and you can see this guy's got his yellow belly underneath. We did a nice comparison video a little while back to show you guys the difference. So you can see that in the top corner. He's got that electric blue tongue, beautiful orange eyes. Um, he gave me a quick bite on the finger there, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about. But yeah, we're gonna bag this little guy up quickly. So we'll pop him in a little bag here and we're gonna carry on looking at the rest of these little tubes and see how many bush snakes or other little green snakes we can rescue from here. Yeah, he's considerably grumpy, very understandably so. But yeah, nice tally after that dead western saw green snake. Nice to get a green snake on the board. It's just time to release this spotted bush snake. You can see he's really eager to go. And there he goes. Stay away from the concrete poles, my friend. Just listening. So I don't know if you can see, but right here next to these tree stumps, there's another one of these poles which we're going to have a quick look at because there is enough room for a snake to actually scoot over. There's a bunch of striped skinks running on this tree. But there's actually enough space for a snake to go from this tree stump into that tunnel, of course looking for food. So we give this one a quick squiz, just got the torch. It's a very stop-start method of helping, but I'll give it a quick squiz. And there we go. There's a bush snake sitting right in here. I don't know if you guys can see that too well. Oh, shun right in here. But let me go get the hook stick. So, 20 minutes later, I was not able to get that bush snake out. Um, the homeowner came outside, we were just chatting, and she was quite cool with me just chucking a bunch of sticks into the pipe so the snake will be able to climb up the sticks in the interior of the pipe and come out the lip when it um when it feels like so not quite a success story but the snake at least is not going to die in there so. well you can hear we're no longer in the western cape i'm in KwaZulu-Natal for a week or so up here on the east coast just outside of Devon and if anyone's been on the channel for a while you'll know you really love the summer rainfall areas whoa this is a common river frog just buzzing down here by one of the little dams it's another one of these common river frogs this one's got a nice sort of dorsal stripe on him let's even grab a quick picture but oh there's a little can't see too well if you can get close enough, but there is a common platana or the African clawed frog, as the Americans like to call them, just under there in the water. And how cool is this? We've actually got a snoring puddle frog, a common river frog, and the common platana, all within. There's another platana. How cool is that? Just they're right there in the shallows. So we have three species of frogs, four individuals in, what is that, maybe 30 centimeters? You'd be doing well if you spent the whole day in the Western Cape to get four species of frogs. 
and in the background what you can hear is the painted reef rocks going absolutely ballistic and <clears throat> if you guys have seen some of my other videos in the past whenever i come visit uh, the statue where my folks live always walk along this little dam wall and we see if there are any animals that have fallen into these pieces of concrete got my camera gear here um, one more piece of concrete that have fallen into these holes. Usually there's quite a bit of toads. <coughs> what is that? Uh, it's a big frog. I mean, it's a big crab. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything in here today. They put these really annoying bright lights. But we always chum and walk. Oh God. Have a look at that. That is a Nile monitor. That's absolutely insane. It's a little hatchling Nile monitor. And he's stuck in this tube. A oh, shame, you can see he's, he's not too bad. He's a little bit thin, so he might've been here a little while, but we definitely have to get this guy out. Let me turn off and see if we can grab him out. So, got the gumboots on, so we're ready for a bit of action, but let me turn this off. Let's see if we can get this Nile monitor out without him biting me, because they are really bitey. Um, but he should be okay. So let's have a go. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Ow. His claws are sharp as nails. I'm getting attacked by bees. Uh, it is a bee. One thing we don't like are bees. Um, let's try again. There are quite a few spiders in here, so I don't want to get nailed by a spider either. How's it, man? Oh, uh, we, we got the lizard. It was stuck in the hole. Sorry? It's a lizard. Lizard? Yeah. So, you're, you're taking us away? <laughs> Hold on. Yes, yeah, so we just saved this lizard. Big. Yeah. What's your monitor? So, apologies for the awkward video there, but one of the security guards just was coming to see what I was doing. Um, but yeah, have a look at that. He's a little bit thin, um, but nothing that a couple of frogs and an egg or two or a lizard <laughs> won't um, fix him up. But yeah, I've just put him straight in the water now so he could get a little bit of a drink and. I'll wait till the morning and I'll actually release him up here by the top of the dam where he'll be able to get loads of food and if I don't get stung by a bee between then and now but yeah, pretty chuffed to see this guy I was not expecting to see a monitor trapped in one of these holes Now a monitor, Varanus niloticus You can see these beautiful eyes pointy snout and he's obviously got a long tongue um, much like a snake people often confuse him for snakes when they see the tails disappearing under rocks and in rock crevices but yeah not dangerous at all once they get to about two meters they give you quite a bite and they will scratch you to absolute pieces with these limbs I and mean, have a look at the nails on these guys uh, so you got to be careful of those but otherwise really nice to have around Watch them in the dams and the rivers, catching birds. Rats, mice, frogs, they'll eat just about anything. Beautiful. Now I'm monitor. So we have another species of frog for the evening. Well, for this side of the pond anyway. There's two snoring puddle frogs. These are just tiny ones. These are probably only just sort of come out of the water from tadpole stage. And you usually see them in quite high numbers when they are small like this. You can see next to my fingers, they're absolutely diminutive. I mean, that grasshopper that just spooked that one is probably bigger than the frog itself. Um, but let's see if we can't find any Natal tree frogs. I'll try to see if we can show you guys some of those. Those guys are really pretty. But there we go, soaring puddle frog. There we go, there's a young Natal or a forest tree frog. Oh, a little green one. They can be a variety of colors. They can be sort of, whoops. Where's this little guy gone? There you go. They can be green like this guy, they can be sort of a camouflage brown and gray, and even completely uniform brown with a few green speckles on them. 
but as you can see they always have these gorgeous red eyes you can see a little bit more of his pattern there yeah not gonna bother this guy he's really small but we're gonna carry on so if anyone's a regular viewer to the channel you would have seen we now have adapted our strategy i got pretty tired of getting eaten by mosquitoes down by the frogs and the ponds so now we're slowly driving along the edge of this sort of forested section and of course we're looking for chameleons so we're gonna drive through here a little bit and try to see if we can find some flat neck chameleons and hopefully some other creatures and i will check in with you when we get something So can you see it yet? Can you see it yet? There you go, that is a tiny hatchling flatback chameleon. This chameleon is probably not even, I'd probably say about a month old or so. Beautiful little animals, you can see it just clinging to all life on the edge of this little branch here. You can see we've got these tiny little gula crests there, typical white stripes on either side of the mouth there. Little dorsal lateral stripe on the body. But he'll just sit here until the sun comes up and then he'll continue his foraging all on these little sticks. So we're just out again in another section with some beautiful wild grassland. Um, coupled with some of these sort of typical palm palms you get down here in the wild and south coast. And have a look at this. We've got <clears throat> a tiny little hatchling flatbed chameleon, Chameleano dilepis. Guys, absolutely gorgeous. You can see next to my thumb, he's absolutely tiny. So this guy will only be a couple of months old. And typically where you see one, you see a stack of others. So we're not gonna pick him up or disturb him. I am just gonna grab a quick soften provacha record pick, and then we're gonna carry on and see how many we can spot in this tiny little area. So there's a little flapneck chameleon that we just photographed and there's another one right over here. Hard to see on the phone when we're so far, but right over there, there's a little one. Let's have a closer look. So people always tell you chameleons are so hard to find and so rare and you don't see them like you used to, but you just have to know where to look. This is a one slightly bigger than well, he's probably about three times the size of the ones you've been seeing. This guy was probably born, I would assume, maybe two, three months ago. He's just resting here. He's kind of little, he's actually weeds, but he's happy. Oh, we just woke him up. So I'm not going to bother him. Now we're going to move on. This will probably be the last flub neck that I show you guys. I'm just on my way back to the car. And once you've seen one, you've seen them all really. It's about the seventh or eighth specimen for the evening. Again, just sheltering on this long grass. They tend to always hide behind leaves like this, whether it helps with predators not seeing them or just keeps them a little bit sheltered from the wind. But always not. So it's now the next day after we got that monitor lizard and a couple of those frogs and all those chameleons last night and I have the monitor lizard in the bag here. I just, you can see him cruising around. What I did was I took him back to my house, well, back to where I'm staying, just to give him some fluids to make sure he was completely hydrated because we have no idea how long he was in there for. So now I'm just coming to release him just on the other side of the dam, away from those concrete pipes, and hopefully he doesn't go in there again. But yeah, there's plenty of reed frogs and crabs and other things for him to eat here. So let's just see if we can get him out the bag. And there he goes. Happy monitor, stoked to be back into his environment. You can see him just swimming along there, just like a crocodile propelling himself. And away he goes. So that's a really good ending to what would have been a horrific story for that poor monitor. He definitely would have died. So let's go look for some snakes.